So Nvidia just announced a new update at Computex. If you're somebody that already owns the PG27 AQN, or if you're currently on the fence between going IPS or OLED, you're definitely gonna wanna see this. This new firmware brings three new features, but the big one here is ULMB2 or Ultra Low Motion Blur, the sequel, and you don't even need an Nvidia GPU to take advantage of this. This is essentially a new gen of backlight strobing technology, which greatly reduces the effects of motion blur in game. The idea here is that it keeps things sharper when they're moving, or more importantly, when you're flicking to a target. The concept here itself isn't new. It goes by a few different names. The most recognizable and arguably the best at this point is Zowie's Diac. The problem is that to get Diac specifically, you have to make a lot of concessions. The XL2566K retails for $600. It is 360 hertz, but it's also 24.5 inches, is only 1080p, and is a TN panel. And while that might work for somebody who is exclusively into sweaty, competitive FPS, the majority of the comments under that video echoed that in 2023, it's just too much to sacrifice when we have so much exciting monitor tech coming out. So Nvidia decided to offer something very competitive to Diac Plus with ULMB2. It currently only works with the ASUS PG27AQN and a comparable monitor from Acer, but there are two monitors coming soon that'll be able to take advantage of this. The way Nvidia tests this is pretty insane. We've got what looks like a $40,000 Phantom high-speed camera on a Colossus robot arm from Motorized Precision. It'll run you about 240K, and this allows them to capture footage that looks like this. This is not a render or a simulation. This is the real thing in action captured at very high speed. And here's the way I test it with we have pursuit camera tracking at home with the Sony a7 IV on a slider track. The idea here is that the human eye tracks objects in game as they move across the screen. So the camera needs to be moving as well at the same speed as the subject. We track these moving UFOs from blur busters with a moving camera. And that's where you get these images that pop up in a lot of monitor reviews. So here we see the motion blur, the AQN monitor with ULMB2 off. And here it is with ULMB2 on. Obviously a very solid improvement. This was taken with the monitor pushing a full 360 FPS. And here we have the PG27 AQN running ULMB2 versus the Zowie XL2566K running Diac Plus Premium also captured at a full 360. At first glance, the Zowie appears sharper because those blacks are really pronounced. Remember that the pixels in a TN panel can go to black faster than an IPS. If we pixel peep here, you can see some pretty significant image doubling on the Diac with a third bit of ghosting trailing behind, whereas on the ULMB2, you see some faint or ghosting without the hard doubling. And I think most people would be drawn to the Diac image just because those blacks are punched in so hard, but the areas outside the main image are cleaner on the ULMB2 side. Nonetheless, we are pixel peeping really hard here on a single still frame image. In game, I can definitely tell the difference between running these modes on or off, but I can't really tell the difference between ULMB2 and Diac when I play them back to back. And that's a great thing because what Nvidia has essentially done here is created a no compromise solution for people that were thirsting for Diac, but didn't want to give up 1440p or IPS colors or variable refresh rate, which we'll talk about here in just a sec. The big reason why only the latest top tier monitors are compatible with ULMB2 is because they have to hit certain performance standards. And one of those key things being brightness, because what this tech is doing is actually turning off the backlight for up to 75% of each frame. And some of the older ULMB solutions that we've seen before have made monitors so dim that they weren't really usable. Because I learned so much during my obsessive brightness testing of all the latest OLED panels, I did go back and remeasure this panel and the Zowie as well. At 100% brightness in SDR mode, the AQN puts up about 535 nits without ULMB. And for what it's worth, this is crazy bright, like way too bright. I normally run this panel around 70%. Turning on ULMB2 took us down to 250 nits. So it does impact brightness quite a bit, but 250 is still plenty bright, even in a bright room. For those of you that are curious, Diac Off will get you 320 nits on the Zowie side and Diac Plus on premium lands you at 233. So we don't see as much impact to brightness over there, but the end result is still just a touch better on the AQN. If you're wondering, this is not available on the OLED panels because they don't have the brightness overhead to spare. So while you do get drastically lower gray to gray times on OLED that results in some really fast transitions, you actually get a pretty similar level of motion blur to the AQN when it's not running ULMB2. So that's all the objective stuff, but subjectively, it is really nice to use. I recently upgraded my system to an i9-13900K and after some system tweaks and settings tuning, I'm able to clear over 300 FPS in most maps in Modern Warfare 2, and it just feels like absolute butter. It is such a smooth experience, and yes, I do feel the difference when I go back to 240 FPS on the OLED monitors. OLED still has it in image quality because those blacks and that contrast make for a really rich looking frame, but in competitive, I would definitely go for 360 ULMB2 if your setup can push that. I can confirm that ULMB2 doesn't have any impact to input latency, and it also works fine with the 25 inch esports mode. The only thing to be aware of here is that you can either run G-Sync or ULMB2. You can't run both at the same time, 
time, but it's great to have the option. So for single player games that run heavier on your system, it's great to have G-Sync to avoid some screen tearing, but on those competitive titles that run a lot lighter where you can easily push higher frame rates, ULMB2 would be the way to go. They made a couple tweaks to the G-Sync variable overdrive too. This means that your overdrive will adjust more accurately as your frame rate moves up and down. Most monitors are generally tuned to provide the best experience at the highest FPS, this will reduce ghosting or overshoot really dialed in as your frame rate changes. This works great for consoles that are capped at 60 or 120 FPS. And they've also made some tweaks to the overdrive tuning to model the RGB space instead of linear light. It's really nerdy, but it basically means the display is gonna have a more accurate brightness curve during the transitions. But clearly ULMB2 is the star of the show here. It's a very welcome update from Nvidia, and it's just one more reason to consider a top tier IPS monitor over some of the current OLED options. OLED looks amazing, and I can't speak to the Acer XB273UF, but this makes the PG27AQN a feature-packed powerhouse of a monitor with no real concern about burn-in or lifespan. If you currently own one of these supported monitors, this new firmware should be available to download by the time you see this video, if not shortly after. If you got any value out of this video today, please drop me a like or consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. If you need any specific gear recommendations or you just want to talk shop with some knowledgeable people, the private Discord is the best place to do that. I will link that down in the description. That's it for today. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.